Lenny, thank you. Tonight at a WXII 12 News exclusive, at least 50 people are going to lose their jobs next week at a local nonprofit that employs people largely who are blind or visually impaired. And now IFB Solutions says even more cuts are possible. They're expecting 137 people could be out of their positions altogether, including 76 who are blind and 15 veterans. Why is this happening? It's all a result of policy changes at the Department of Veterans Affairs. Let's bring in Mallory Lane now with a look at exactly what has happened and what the company plans to do about this. Mallory. Kenny, representatives with the IFB Solutions are taking their fight to Washington this week. They're meeting with several lawmakers to explain why these cuts are a devastating blow to the blind community. This is the optical lab at IFB Solutions. Many of these employees are blind or visually impaired, but they don't let their disability stop them. They work hard to make eyeglasses for veterans at the VA. IFB makes about 1,200 pairs of eyeglasses every day. When lenses are bought, there's scratch resistant on both sides. Scott Smith has worked at IFB for five years. He considers this home. It gives all the blind and vision impaired people a sense of purpose in life, you know. I mean, to have a job working here making glasses for veterans means a lot for everybody. I mean, I'm a veteran myself, and it's like I'm paying it back forward to them, too. But Smith is scared. He's one of 137 employees who could lose their job. What would that mean for you to lose your job? Oh, man. Couldn't provide for my family. Half these people got little kids. I mean, I'm lucky my kids are grown, you know. This all comes down to policy changes within the Department of Veterans Affairs. That agency gives IFB solutions long-term contracts and has for nearly two decades. But things have changed after a recent court order said that the Veterans Benefits Act gives priority to veteran-owned small businesses over Ability One nonprofits like IFB Solutions. Normally, these two entities coexist. IFB believes there's enough business to go around, and the nonprofit wants Congress to clarify its intent concerning that language. This is an unintended consequence. Two statutes that have worked in concert for so many years to protect opportunities for veterans and opportunities for employment for people who are blind. There's no reason why they can't coexist in the marketplace. Dan Kelly is the chief operating officer at IFB Solutions. There's 70 percent unemployment amongst people who are blind, so seven out of ten Americans who are blind or visually impaired are not working. And if an individual loses a, a job, there's a less than 30 percent chance that they're going back to work anywhere else. We want to make sure that we protect equal rights to employment for people who are blind, and that's why we're fighting this fight so hard. Smith hopes it works. There's no places really out there in the public sector that provide jobs for the visually impaired or blind. So it's rough. The first wave of job cuts of 47 positions is expected at the end of July 31st, so a week from Wednesday. Wow. All right, so Mallory, when the folks from IFB go up to Washington, do we know what they're going to be doing? Do we know who they're going to be meeting with? Yes, so they are planning to meet with multiple representatives, including Congressman Mark Walker. He's one of 34 representatives who have signed a bicameral letter to VA Secretary Robert Wilkie, urging him to take action and allow nonprofits to keep their role. We talked with Congressman Walker today about his decision to sign the letter. He says it's personal. My younger brother has been blind uh, through a disease that, that uh, was hereditary for, for nearly 30 years. So we want to make sure, and, and I will tell you what, we've got a wonderful community here uh, that do great work, uh, that provide jobs for many in the disabled community. We're going to continue to make sure that we not only speak out, but also take action steps to prevent any kind of harm from coming to those communities. Walker hopes to speak directly with Secretary Wilkie at some point this week. Meanwhile, Representative Virginia Fox signed the letter too. In a statement to WXII 12 News, Fox says, quote, it is very unfortunate to see that two procurement programs that Congress intended to be complementary have been inter, uh, inter, inter interpreted, excuse me, by courts as competing against each other. She goes on to say that she is keeping communication open between industry stakeholders and the VA to find a fix.